Hey everyone, it's Green Ad Guide. Lately, I've been asked to review a lot of drinks that are not stereotypical energy drinks. So in this episode, I wanted to talk about what that word means. What is the definition of an energy drink and why are some drinks so eager to not be called that name? In other words, why are energy drinks Slytherins? Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Caffeine at Midnight podcast, a short, no BS, science-based podcast for people who drink caffeine and work beyond the nine to five. I'm your host, Danielle Robertson-Rath, also known as Green-Eyed Guide. I research caffeine, energy drinks, and fatigue in the workplace. I'm the author of Are You a Monster or a Rockstar? A Guide to Energy Drinks and How to Get Shit Done When You Feel Like Shit. Oh, by the way, uh, I kind of like the S word, sorry. You can learn more about me, what I do, my books, my educational background, all that good stuff at greeneyedguide.com. For now, grab your favorite caffeinated beverage and your favorite note-taking app and let's do this. Apologies in advance if you heard the sounds of my bulldog or my baby in the background. I don't have a lot of time or a lot of fancy podcast equipment. What I do have is a lot of passion, and the Anchor app allows me to share that passion with you, dear listeners. If you are considering your own podcast, I highly recommend using Anchor. It's completely free. You can record, edit, and publish right from your phone, and Anchor distributes to Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, and all the other podcasts. You can download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Okay, why are energy drinks Slytherins? Well, first let's talk about what it means to be an energy drink. So you should know the FDA does not have a legal definition for the term energy drink. However, in my world, in the scientific research world, and in general practice, to be an energy drink a product has to meet three criteria. And this is paraphrasing from caffeineinformer.com, which lists these criteria out for you. First of all, it has to have caffeine and at least one other ingredient known to increase energy. That includes things like herba mate, guarana, things that contain caffeine, as well as things like B vitamins, which are supposed to boost stimulation. So basically, the first criteria is it has to have caffeine and one other ingredient which is supposed to improve your energy or your focus. The second criteria is this product has to be marketed or labeled with the intent to give you energy. And the third criteria is that this energy we're talking about here is not caloric energy. It's not like, you know, biochemical energy. It's a boost in your mental stamina, your mental efficiency, alertness, or anything else that you're going to perceive as a brain boost. So not like, you know, calories are a measurement of energy. We're not talking about that type of caloric energy. We're talking about perceived energy. So those are your three criteria in order to meet the spirit of the definition of the word energy drink. All right, it's time for our metaphor. I might just explode from excitement here because talking about Harry Potter and talking about caffeine at the same time, oh my gosh, I love it. (sighs) Okay, so there are three reasons why energy drinks are Slytherins. The first reason is that there's a negative stereotype. When you hear the term energy drink, Normally, you'd picture something quote-unquote loaded with caffeine and sugar. This is the stereotype, right? Energy drinks are quote-unquote dangerous concoctions of caffeine and sugar. There's this negative stereotype with energy drinks. And the same is with Slytherins. In the world of Harry Potter, people that are categorized as Slytherins are not nice people. They're dangerous people. They're slimy. They're selfish. They're mischievous. They're out to win at any cost. They're not good people to be around. So there are there are drinks that want to avoid being called an energy drink, even if they do meet those three criteria we talked about, because they don't want to be associated with that negative stereotype. 
in a similar way, there are people that love Harry Potter that take the quiz online and find out that they're a Slytherin and they're worried because in the book, at least in the, in the series of books, Slytherins aren't great people. So you might be embarrassed to be a Slytherin because there is this negative stereotype. So that's your first reason. Energy drinks are like Slytherins because people don't like being called that. They don't like being associated with that negative stereotype. Which brings us to our second reason why energy drinks are Slytherins. Not being a Slytherin doesn't automa automatically make you good or better. Let's look at the drinks. So there are several types of drinks with caffeine that are not quote unquote energy drinks that are in fact worse for you than the very stereotype they're trying to avoid. For example, there are quote unquote loaded teas with way more caffeine and sugar and B vitamins than you should have in one day. Just because it's not a quote unquote energy drink doesn't make it a good thing for you to have. Similarly, there's pre-workouts, whether they're powdered or, or liquid, that have way more caffeine than you should have in a day. So even though it's not a quote unquote energy drink, it's still a dangerous thing for you to have especially if you're a minor or if you're sensitive to caffeine. And thirdly, there are quote unquote healthy smoothies with way more sugar than the stereotypical energy drink. Maybe that sugar is coming from things like green tea or agave or a shit ton of frozen blueberries, but still it's way more sugar than you're supposed to have in one day. And maybe it's more sugar than the stereotypical energy drink. So not being Slytherin doesn't automatically make you a good person. Not being an energy drink doesn't automatically make you a good or healthy product. And third, the third reason why energy drinks are Slytherins is that being an energy drink doesn't automatically make you bad. Being a Slytherin doesn't automatically make you bad. Let's look at Red Bull, for example. Red Bull has one third the amount of caffeine in bang, bang energy. Red Bull is the energy drink stereotype. It is the leading energy drink worldwide for several years, and it's unlikely to relinquish its throne, knock on wood. Bang, their marketing is all about how their drink is quote unquote better for you than the stereotypical energy drink. When in fact, their drink is worse for you. It is more dangerous for you caffeine wise then the very same energy drink stereotype they are mocking or trying to avoid. If you're a minor or if you're sensitive to caffeine, Bang is way more dangerous for you than Red Bull, than the energy drink stereotype. So again, being an energy drink doesn't automatically make you bad. You have to look at the finer details. You have to look at the caffeine content. You have to look at the sugar content. You have to look at the B vitamin content because some B vitamins like niacin, B6 can give you side effects if you have too much. Yes, even though they're water-soluble vitamins, you can have too much and you can get side effects, yes, from vitamins. So you have to look at these details, not just the term, is it a quote-unquote energy drink? This is probably a good moment to mention that I am, in fact, a Slytherin. When I took the uh, Pottermore quiz online and the BuzzFeed quiz, there's several quizzes online you can find. I always get categorized as a Slytherin. Now, hopefully by now you kind of know me and you don't think I'm an evil, mischievous, selfish, conniving person, but you know, I am driven, I am passionate, I'm a scientist, so I am analytical and sometimes maybe I guess that's quote unquote calculating. So yeah, I guess I'm more Slytherin than I am Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff or Gryffindor. Sorry, not sorry. I am a Slytherin. But again, being a Slytherin doesn't automatically make you bad. Being a quote unquote energy drink doesn't automatically make you dangerous. We have to look at the finer details. I hope this all helped. And you know, reach out to me on Instagram or via email or however you choose and let me know if you do have a Harry Potter house that you're proud of or, you know, if you don't know Harry Potter at all but you found this metaphor helpful. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. 
If you enjoyed today's episode, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with at least one person. Word of mouth works great. You can also take a screenshot or share the link on any social media channel you like best. Just remember to tag me at Green Eyed Guide. You'll also find a lot more information about me, what I do, and some freebies at greeneyedguide.com slash freebies. Take care. Bye-bye.